certainly one way to do things. What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this box is the latest resin 3D printer by the folks over at Elgu. That's right, it is a larger version of their Elgu Mars. This is the Saturn resin 3D printer. I'm really looking forward to getting this thing unboxed and getting some prints running on it. Just like I've done in previous videos, we're gonna go straight into my initial impressions on the machine and then afterwards I'll do the full unboxing. So let's check it out. All right, and here it is, the Elgu Saturn Resin 3D Printer. It's honestly a little bit hard for me to say. I'm so used to saying the Elgu Mars. Anything other than that just feels odd, to be honest. But this is their new larger format resin 3D printer. And so far I've been printing with this for the past probably day and a half now. And it's really met almost all of my expectations for an Elgu resin 3D printer especially now that this is a larger unit. All right, so let's get some information out right out of the way. Elgu reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at this pre-release unit here. I think this is pretty well packed together and probably, knock on wood, will represent what ends up being shipped out, what I can only assume is later this year. I have no time frame on when it actually will be you know, up for sale or even what the price of it is but they wanted me to provide some feedback on it as well as sharing it out here with you guys. And to be honest, I don't really have any major call outs about this machine. This thing prints extremely well and I've been very happy with the results that I've been getting off this machine. It's really and truly a larger Elgu Mars and that's what I was hoping for. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna notice with this machine is obviously it's got a really large red acrylic case this is sort of their profile here with all of their resin 3D printers. And yeah, this is, it looks great. No cracking or anything like that. It seems to be really nicely made. Uh, overall, the build quality of this machine is up to par, if not better than what I've seen on the Elgu Mars. And yeah, it's all metal. I'm not really seeing any plastic involved with this. Uh, with this machine and yeah, very, very happily with some of the design changes that they've made with this machine. And I'll get to those in just a second. What I do wanna mention is the actual build volume with this machine and how it compares to the Elgu Mars. So the build volume for the Saturn is 192 by 120 by 200 millimeter. Comparing that to the standard Elgu Mars, that is 68 by 120 by 150. There is quite the size difference between the build volumes of these machines. And this is not the largest of the resin 3D printers that are out there. This is a great mid-size option that will soon be available for folks that are looking to further upgrade from their Elgu Mars or let's say an Anycubic Photon to something slightly larger that's not looking forward to going to a Piopoli Phenom or uh, a, you know, a Frozen Transform, one of these massive monster resin 3D printers. This is a great transitional machine for those that are just looking for something slightly larger. So the biggest design change, I mean, other than the build volume for this machine is the front facing USB port, which is hugely helpful for getting this thing in and out to load files up. It's not in the back, it's not on the side, but in the front. And I wish all of the resin 3D printers had these ports on the front of their machines. I get it, it doesn't look as sexy with it being on the front of the machines, but it's so much easier to get access to these ports when they're on the front. My only gripe about this machine, that's not even really a gripe, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's something that's bearable, is that the toggle on and off switch is on the back of the machine. I would love that to be on the side of the machine. It would've been just so much easier to work with. The actual power supply, that's fine for that to be plugged into the back, but having that on the side would just make that much more easily accessible to toggle on and off when needed. The other thing I wanted to point out was that there is an ethernet port on the back of this machine. So far, I, as far as I'm aware, there's no internet connectivity for this particular machine, but it sounds like that might be something that's coming in the future or maybe prior to its release or with a firmware update. Again, pretty cool potential there if I'm able to wirelessly send files from my computer directly to the machine. Anything to do with simplifying the workflow, I'm all in favor of. So let's talk about this big metal vat. It's held in with these two screws. 
Initially, I wasn't happy that the screws I had to completely remove in order to get this out. I guess, you know, in reality, I don't have to. I can leave them in there and just lift it up. Some of the other resin 3D printers that I've had, I've dropped these inside of the vat when resin's in there and it's having to fish those out is never a fun thing to do. For now, it's not really that big of a deal and there's actually these bolts on the bottom of the vat that make it super easy to line this up and know when it's in place so that you can just slide these in and screw them back down. The other thing that I'm absolutely in love with this vat for is one, it's got these great nifty handles on the side, but the other is that here, normally what happens is I'll be doing maintenance or cleaning or whatever it may be. I'll end up putting pieces of paper down on my workbench here and setting the vat on here. And I'm always concerned that something's gonna get scraped on this or maybe it's damp and it's gonna get on the underside of this. Well, there actually is these bolts help raise the vat up just ever so slightly off of your tabletops. It actually helps protect the underside of this FEP sheet. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the vat from the Elgu Mars compared to the vat from the new Saturn. As you can see, there's quite a size difference. They're still pretty much the same depth here. Actually, I think they're exactly the same depth. But uh, yeah, these, obviously the larger now has a handle that makes it again, much easier to lift off and carry versus having to actually grab the sides of this and take it on and off. And it doesn't feel as chunky as the actual original vet did. The new vet walls are also a lot thinner than the original. Is that a plus or minus? I don't really know, but I'm assuming it costs them less to make because it's gonna use less materials. It also makes it a whole lot less heavier uh, to lift this up. This actually feels almost the same weight, maybe even less than this original vat did. All right, now let's talk about this big build plate. This is also sporting the new larger bolt design here that uh, the Elgumars Pro is sporting. I think also the, uh, the My Mini Factory version of the printer also had these larger bolts. Um, yeah, I mean, this build plate is pretty dang large and there's a hair from my hair. Hopefully that's my hair on the build plate. So if I take a look at the original Mars build plate, I can get about two, yeah, about two and a half of the original build plate on this new Saturn build plate. And that's just really the length and width, not even accounting for the height of this new unit as well. It's, it's pretty impressive. All right, so enough of me talking about the machine. Let's look at some of these prints that I was able to get off the machine. The first one I wanna talk about is this Rook test file. I ended up using Ceratec Fast Resin for all of my prints. This machine didn't come with any resin, at least in my packaging. I don't know, again, if that's gonna change on the final delivery once they actually start producing and that you can buy these that all might change. But I ended up using Seertech Fast. It's what I have on hand. It's what I use for most of my prints these days. And uh, I think it came out really great. I can actually compare this to my original Rook print that I did on the Mars. And I have to say the Mars print turned out just slightly nicer than the Saturn. I can see a little bit more of the layer lines on the Saturn file than I can for the Mars. And again, I don't know if that's because I was using uh, Elgu's resin and it was, you know, the profile and this, the actual print was probably fine tuned to print with that particular resin. And I just threw some resin in here and saw how it would turn out. I then loaded up the build plate with a whole bunch of smaller files that I wanted to run off and print just to see how it might handle with a whole bunch of different files printing at once. My go-to is Cast and Plays Mimic. I print this pretty much as my, this is my test file. This is my test piece for all of the resin 3D printers that I use. And again, this turned out really nice. And again, I have a comparison to the original Mars. Same scenario here. I think this ended up printing slightly better on the Mars. Not that the Saturn looks bad. I just think that the 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 Mars is just slightly cleaner. And again, it could be that I was using uh, the Ceratec Fast. 
that I'm not using isopropanol alcohol to clean my prints anymore. So that might have some, you know, facet to this that's it's causing how this might end up the final results looking here. But again, I think it looks pretty dang great. It's just the L original Mars just looks slightly better. I also printed this great Batman file. This is a really stylized, characterized version of Batman that's created by Juan Carlos. It's available over on my mini factory, free to download. I have links to all the files, by the way, that I'm showing off in this video. I'll also be sharing my Chitu box settings that I used for the Elgu Saturn here. It's so hard for me to not say Mars. I'm just so used to saying Mars. I ended up tweaking the profiles for these particular prints here. I just threw down. I wasn't quite sure what to put, so I put my standard Elgu Mars CRTEC fast resin settings, which allows me to print slightly faster than I normally can with the with the default profile there that was loaded with the machine. And all of these prints that were on this one build plate took about four hours and 50 minutes versus if I ran this through the original slicer file there that was available in Chi2Box, it was gonna be about five and a half hours. So a little bit quicker in terms of some of the printing capabilities with just the dot, more, a slightly more dialed in setting. And lastly, this is Pikachu from Nico Industries. This is a Pikachu Iron Man to be more specific. And yeah, this was printed in multiple parts. I ended up breaking one of the hands where he was snapping his fingers. Unfortunately, when I was removing the supports from the print, that happens from time to time. If you've ever printed any of these resin minis, you get a little aggressive with your support removal and you end up snipping something off. Again, I think this turned out pretty dang clean and looks Pretty nice. I wouldn't mind seeing this slightly scaled up and larger. I might have to do that here in the near future. So after printing all of those files and loading out the build plate, I wanted to really maximize the build volume and the potential for this printer. So over at Hex3D over on his Patreon page, as I'm dropping horns on the ground, this is his legend bust. This came in three different parts here. He actually has multiple variations of this, everything all in one, one without the head, uh, so that you can print the head separately so that you don't end up with supports on the chest here, but I was okay with that. Uh, I printed this version just because I wanted the, the horns to be printed separately. And again, I tried to maximize the print volume with this as best I could. And this file turned out spectacular, absolutely spectacular. So the horns, I don't have anything glued together yet, uh, but the horns I can hold here on this and I'll try to get some close ups so that you can more properly see this. Just looks outstanding. The print quality on this, again, just looks ridiculously good. I love, absolutely love resin 3D printers. And man, I, I'm loving the fact that companies are spending the time to focus on making larger format versions. Hopefully the price point will be something that's relatively affordable for most people there out on the marketplace. Uh, just really looking forward to this really getting out there and hitting the streets. I think this is going to make a ton of noise out in the marketplace. It's again, such a great step up from the original Mars and yeah, the build volume adjustment is just that great stepping stone to going to something even larger, which might be too large for some people, but this right here would allow you to print more minis or larger statue files like this. This is a great scale, like a six inch scale here, really easily on a resin 3D printer. So if you're interested in this, I'll have links down below to Elgu site. As soon as that becomes available, I'll have links to the actual place where you could purchase this. Again, not available just yet. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching, you guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you're interested in seeing the full unboxing, make sure to stay tuned here. Right after I'm done talking, I'll be going in and showing you the full unboxing for this resin 3D printer. Hey, again, thanks again so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions, and I will see you next time. Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching the unboxing portion of this video. I so appreciate that here. Uh, really looking forward to getting this thing unboxed. Hopefully it had pretty positive results after I got things printing. I don't really know. I haven't got this really unboxed and fully opened up yet. So here we're gonna get this opened up and we can take a look at the contents that's inside the box. First of all, it appears to be very nicely packaged. There are lots of thick foam that's included inside this box. It's not too heavy, very easy for me to carry. 
and lift up on this table as well. Similar to other resin 3D printers, this should be the, all of the different tools. Yeah, we got a power supply. Uh, here's the power bank for this, some gloves, your little snippers here, your plastic spatula. You've got different tools that you're gonna need if you're looking to replace anything or level the build plates. They're also including these, I'm not sure what level of masks they are, but hopefully they're N95 masks. Then I can use these for other things that are going on in this crazy world. Uh, we've got filters as well for resin for cleaning out. There's a metal spatula. So not only does it come with the plastic, but it comes with a metal spatula as well. That's really, really nice. And here is a leveling paper. That's something different that they're not typically including with their other printers. So this is a thicker card stock here that it appears that I'm gonna be able to use for leveling the actual build plate. And obviously there's a USB stick here as well. I'm assuming there's gonna be manuals and all sorts of other things here on this that I'll be checking out here in just a few minutes. Certainly one way to do things. So I have no idea if the build plate came leveled or not now that it dropped on the ground, <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna have to re-level the build plate. That shouldn't be an issue here. Um, yeah, nice big, by the way, this says nice big build plate. I'll be doing some direct comparisons against the Elgu and then, uh, or the Mars, I should say. Uh, Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a huge fan of this right here. Uh, having to completely remove these bolts, but that's uh, a minor a minor thing. Nice big vat as well here. I will have to bust out the manual. Uh, I don't, it appears there is a film over like a, a little cover over the screen. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to remove that or not. So I'm gonna have to refer back to the actual manual before uh, fully getting this up and running here. But so far, yeah, all the package in content, it, it all looks really, really, really nice. Uh, very straightforward. So I'm just gonna get this removed and then I'm gonna bust out the manual and see what the next steps are. All right, so I believe I've got the bed leveled and I'm gonna fire off the first test print in here. Uh, it did not come with any resin, so I'm just going to use my Cyrotech Fast and hope that the settings on the uh, default file work with this uh, test print here, and we'll see how it goes. I'll probably pause it a little bit way through just to see, but fingers crossed this should work. I think it will. All right, the first prints are done here. This is the... Rook test print here turned out great. I ended up using the Cyrotec Fast resin. That's basically my go-to resin. And so far it looks pretty good with these default settings that they had well, with this pre-sliced file. This machine did not come with resin, which is important to note. So if you're interested in getting this, whenever it goes on sale, you'll want to make sure to pick up some resin. I'm not sure if they'll officially include that with this when they officially go on sale, when they start shipping them out, but more than likely they'll include something with the Elgu resin as well. All the links down below to the Cyrotec Fast resin uh, as well for anybody interested in that. So I'm gonna get this off and cleaned up and we'll take a look at it. 